thank you everyone for being here. Um, so my name is Ali Taqi and I'm basically presenting all the way from Bahrain. Um, my foreword is going to be on the film Cairo Station and I found this marvelous article that basically talks more about it. And the website that I got this from is called uh, Cinema Escapists. The good thing or what's fascinating about this website is basically if you just go down here, it basically says, what can you learn from this movie and why does it matter? I just really like that about them because a lot of times we'd watch films and not really know what are the hidden gems uh, in those movies. And I guess such articles would just really shed a light. So what got me interested in this topic was when I was young, um, like a child, um, we used to watch a lot of Egyptian films, black and white Egyptian films. And now I look back and think how like the transition that back in the days Egyptian films were and how they are today is just like completely not that great anymore. And then I realized that I don't really know much about black, uh, black and white Egyptian films other than whatever I used to watch. And if you can see the poster here, um, or four ladies and, a, and an officer. This was the film that I had in mind when I was a child. I maybe we used to watch it like a lot. So when I was uh, searching for black and white films, the first thing that came out was Taban Yusuf Shaheen, which all I knew about was director, nothing much. And there was a film by him called Cairo Station. So I ended up watching it. And then I came up, I came across this article. The funny thing was, while the movie was starting, they had the actor's names and Yusuf Shaheen's name. And then the, like the title of the film, like, why did they put the director's name first? <laughs> and then they said directed by. So the whole time I watched the whole film, not knowing that Yusuf Shaheen was the main actor in, um, in the movie until I read this article. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's why I never recognized him because I think that was the only film that he, he acted in or something. Anyways, so Cairo Station, uh, also known as Bab al Hadid, um, I don't know why they found uh, uh, like two di different names, but it was also his most controversial feature up until the point in his career. And it's basically imagine Hitchcock going to Egypt filming a movie. This is what Cairo Station basically represents. It's just a bit of that psycho thriller, a bit of Middle Eastern touch, and you basically have Cairo Station. It's a, suspense, it's a suspenseful psychological thriller. It's an intense deep dive into neurosis of a handicapped young man, which is this dude right here. Um, scrouching for a living in a Cairo sta train station at the fatal consequences of his awkwardly unrected romantic desires with who we know as uh, Hindustan in the film. So the first scene was very, like, I was like, how? And this film was shot in 1958. And I was just like, it's quite bold to just have shots of semi-nude photos of uh, women as they zoomed in like one of the first scenes. So I'm like, okay, this is going somewhere. So you have three main characters. You have uh, Banawi, which is Yusuf Shaheen, film anti-hero, handicapped, shy, lonely young man who works as a men menial job at the station. And then you have Hanuma, which is right here. You can see her, gorgeous, beautiful, uh, your typical, um, you know, lively, uh, actress, uh, free-spirited and witty soft drink vendor at a Cairo station. And then you have Farid Shawqi, which is Abu Sarih, which is this guy right here. And physically imposing, charismatic, works as a station porter who leads the charge for creating works union, workers' union. So basically the film runs around different, different plots between those three characters. And it, the, the film documents Banawi's increasingly troublesome pursuit of Hanuma. Obviously, he would just like, if you look at this guy falling in love with this gal right here, 
um, alongside of the other subplots, uh, subplots about Abu Sarih, which is Farid Shawqi, and the impeding, um, impeding marriage of them both. So the crazy guy loves her. Those already are planning to get married, but things happen. So one of the most interesting aspects um, of Cairo Station is Shaheen sheds the light on frequent sexual repression, repression and how it has a negative impact on the anti-hero's mental health. Now, why do I find this interesting? Because this film was shot back in the late 50s. And usually when it comes to male characters, uh, they would just have a specific representation of you know, masculinity, showing just some aspect of uh, you know, nothing to do with mental health. So it was just quite interesting that he was bold enough to actually do that. And so it's startling to see how much of an effort Shaheen put into giving context to the main character's socially unexpected, unexpected behavior. It's just very interesting because usually you'd have a guy loves a girl, drama, blah, blah, blah. But to, to shed a light on a character showing how uh, the focus was on mental health was very, very interesting. So when this film came out in uh, the 90, late 1950s, um, it didn't do well. The, the movie didn't really do great. Although when I, I was watching it, I was like, it's quite interesting. So in the 1950s and the 1960s, it was widely considered a turning point for cinema for how the masterworks enter the mainstream film disclosure. Now, because everyone's expectations of film was women, man, fall in love, and they live happily ever after kind of fairy tale. But Cairo Station went the other extreme and people were like, no, we don't love this. We don't want this, we don't like it. So Cairo Station provoked outrage among uh, Egyptian audience uh, when it was first released in the 1580, uh, 1950, 80, uh, 1958. And it upset a lot of uh, uh, movie watchers, especially like critics, who desired more of a trend, a trend respecting peace. So they were expecting something from Yusuf Shaheen to just basically follow the trend of how the movies uh, were going. But no, it didn't do well. Um, had, even Yusuf Shaheen was quite depressed about the fact that uh, this film wasn't doing great. But what, what I found very, very bold was other than like mentioning that uh, like the nudity scenes, you can see from this photo I was like 50, 1958 and having a shot like this, it was just like, that, that's quite, uh, quite bold. This was one of those scenes that was, he was zooming a lot on, uh, on different angles uh, on, uh, on Hindustan and it was just quite interesting. Then another thing which I found fascinating was, um, Surprisingly, how ironic it was that the film sheds a light on uh, workers' union and uh, that whole concept of how it's something that should be re more represented uh, within Egypt because Shaheen was not under the uh, actors' workers' union. He was sued and he had to spend uh, 30 days in prison and he had to pay a fine because he was a director and not an actor. So the workers' union, the actors' workers' union, decided to sue him, put him into jail. He had to find, uh, basically, pay a fine for it. What's fascinating about this is the movie got reborn in the 70s. So the film was reborn after a new generation of international film lovers discovered it in the 1970s, and it remains his most widely seen and revered project. So when you look at um, what got me to this film was when I was searching uh, the list of films that went to the Academy Awards back in the days, 
this was the first film that went as to be nominated as a foreign film. It didn't get, none of those Egyptian films that were listed went, or actually was, were shed a light on, uh, on the Academy Awards, but this was the first film. And what I also liked was how they introduce a lot of rock and roll. You could see, uh, just hopefully this would play. It's just different from your typical uh, Middle Eastern style of music. I think the music is not that great, right? Or the sound is not that great? Okay. So it just shows you like, how vibrant the film is. It sheds a light on so many different things, but where I find it bold, the uh, focusing on the mental illness when it came to the, to the anti-hero, uh, Pannawi, uh, the sexual identity that basically Yusuf Shane decided to shine a, uh, shed a light on uh, was quite a bold move, even especially like a film that was filmed in, uh, in 1958. It was just like, very, very bold. Um, and the fact that it didn't really become famous or was rejected because people were expecting something much, much more mainstream that would fit in the 50s and 60s kind of um, film genre. So I have a few um, links that would uh, also would help out um, if you guys are interested to read more. This was one really good article that basically explains more about the troubles um, that the film, like how it was un under criticized and all the different uh, challenges that was faced even after the film was um, shown in the cinemas. This is just, uh, so my Instagram account, if you guys would want to reach out and know more, just uh, hit me up. Thank you guys.